Shalom, everyone. I am Dr. Renee, the Assistant Pastor of Empowerment of Faith, Kingdom Center for Ambassadors, and I am so elated to be able to share the Kingdom message once again. So for those who have been watching us, we want to say, first of all, thank you so much for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And most importantly, thank you for listening so that you can apply what you are listening and hearing each time you come on. So as always, we ask that you would like, share, and subscribe, and then click on the bell in the upper right-hand corner so that you can be notified each time we come on. So today I want to talk to you about something that has been stirring in my heart. We want to deal with true repentance. So let's get right into the word. So true repentance, we must know that true repentance is going to do something. What is it going to do? It's going to produce change and it's going to produce fruit. Now, what repentance is not? We must realize something. The world has its way of thinking, way of doing things, believing that certain things are true when they are actually not. So let's examine and see what repentance is not. Number one, repentance is not simply being sorry. It doesn't work like that. Many people think if they just say, oh, I'm so sorry, and then go back and do it again. No, it doesn't work like that. When we repent, we must change. All right. And then number two, repentance, what it is not, repentance is not crying for days over what you have done or what you have not done. You may as well cancel the pity party. You may as well go ahead and cry your last tear because crying is not going to change anything. The father always respond to his word. All right. And then number three, repentance is not just simply making a confession. I was talking to this young lady and I told her that um, there was someone in particular that I knew and they were getting up in age. And I said, you know what? They, they, um, they're not saved, you know, uh, this day and age, people think they can do any and everything. And just as long as you love the Lord, then you are saved according to the gospel of them. But according to the word, it doesn't work like that. But in this conversation, this is what she said. Well, why don't you just call her and ask her to repeat after you? And then because the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, and believe in your heart, you'll be saved. Okay, so let's talk about what we call the elephant in the room. If confession was enough and it stood by itself, then I could confess that I'm a Lamborghini and here I am. That's what I am. No, no, it doesn't work like that. It's more to it. We can't just say some words. The father always examine the heart. So just because I say that I'm sorry, just because that I make a confession, that word in Romeo has been taken out of text for so long. So we are here to kill every religious cow and get rid of them. Okay, so that is not what repentance is. As a matter of fact, let's take it a little further. False repentance, no regrets to the point of change. Like, oh yeah, I'm sorry. And then go right back and do it again. No, that's false repentance. That's that's not true repentance. Changing to make others happy, but not Elohim. It's one thing about when you try to please other people, people will never be satisfied. You can do whatever. They're, they will never be satisfied. So why not? Make the changes for the right reason. And that is because the father is dealing with your heart. All right. And then false repentance, number three, justifying why you are continuing to sin. So in the age that we're living in now, many people don't even consider those things that are sin as being sinful. So in other words, we are making decisions apart from the word of Elohim and we are deeming it 
as being true. Man, that sounds so familiar. Whereas people are doing what's right in their own eyes, right? We, we are living that right now, but there is a remnant who's ready for change. There's a remnant that the Holy Spirit is dealing with your heart. And so as we get away from uh, routines, from tr uh, false tradition, from just things that we've done in the past, we know that the Father is well able to continually watch over his word to perform it. So as we believe his word, then we'll know how we should govern ourselves accordingly. So I can't justify what I am doing if it's sinful, especially if the word has already said it, then why am I, I mean, what's the debate about? Number four, repeating the same cycle of sin. In other words, go up, receive prayer, and then next thing you know, we're on the roller coaster ride and doing that same thing again. Being inconsistent. No, that's false repentance. It didn't, it didn't really happen. And we're going to get deeper into this in just a moment. Number five, saying words without a corresponding action. Anybody can say words. I can repeat words with my one-year-old grandkid. He can say words. It has to be deeper than that. It's not just about what you are confessing. It's about what is in the inside of your mind or what's in the inside of your heart. In Matthew 15 and 8, it says, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. It's almost, think, it's almost as if we think that we can outsmart the one who created us. Surely if he created us, he got a good game himself. I'm talking how we talk. Surely we cannot think that we can hoodwink or we can trick the father. He knows everything. As a matter of fact, before a word is on our tongue, he knows it completely. So we may as well fess up and move about it and be about his business. So that's an example, just a, a snippet of some examples of false repentance. Now let's look at the word for repentance in Hebrew. So this Hebrew word, and some of you, you may have heard this before. The Hebrew word for repent is shub. And so we see that it's comprised of three olivets, which are shin, vav, and bayet. So when we're looking at these words, this is telling us something has to take place on the inside of us. So let's take a deeper look at it. So shin, or some say sheen, shin, it means something is being consumed. And then we can never exhaust the entire word of Elohim. So it goes deeper than that. Shin is comprised of shin, yud, and then noon. So when we're looking at that shin, something is being consumed by the power and the authority of Elohim, something is being consumed. And then noon is telling me that it can either be a sun. It could also means activity, sonship, seed. So something by the power and authority of the Holy Spirit is being consumed. Now, what is it? So we're going to take this a little bit further. We're dealing with the word repent. So we have the next Olivet, which is Vav. In Vav, it means something is intensely fastened or secured or established. So Vav is spelled Vav Vav. And then we have the Hebrew Olivet, Bayet. So Bayet is spelled Bayet, Yud, and Tav. So Bayet is telling me that something is inside of me, something that's in the mind, uh, it's also dealing with the family, but in this context here, something that's on the inside of me or inside of my heart. So when I am dealing with this, watch this, but yet yud tav. Well, yud, there's that power and authority again, and tav, the covenant. So the Hebrew word for repent, this word is telling me that something has been destroyed. What has been destroyed on the inside of me? 
something that I have made covenant with, something that has been vastly or intensely established in my heart, this thing has been destroyed by the word of Elohim, this covenant that I have decided to partake of and put above the word of Elohim, it has been totally obliterated. Now, when we are thinking about repenting, see, it goes beyond what we heard earlier about false repentance, whereas you just say some words. No, when something is totally destroyed, when it's totally consumed, there is nothing left. There is nothing left. As a matter of fact, when you think about it, just think about a house for one moment. So this house, if this house is being totally, totally destroyed, then when you go back, look, there is nothing there. So what was on the inside of you is totally consumed by the word of Elohim. Why? Because there is a greater covenant. I choose the covenant with the father. So when I covenant with him, then that other covenant is broken. And so we're going to move further. Here it is. When you truly re repent, we destroy the covenant that we have pledged allegiance to. When I truly repent, when I truly change my mind about this thing, when I truly repent, I totally turn away from the sin that easily entangled me. When I truly repent. Okay, so if there is no change, there is no repentance. Oftentimes we think that we can just say a thing. Oh, okay, no, I'm not doing that anymore. But did I really change? So let's look at this other scripture and then we're going to move a little further. In Yermahu 25 and 5, it reads, Repent now everyone of his evil way and his evil doings and dwell in the land that Yahweh has given to you and your fathers forever and ever. See, when I'm repenting from something, I need to make sure that I understand this thing that I'm repenting from is evil. I can't say that, oh, well, it's it's good. It's, you know, it's all good. No, I can't play with this thing. This thing has been sent to destroy me. This thing has been sent to annihilate me. This thing has been sent to take me totally out. So I can't play with this thing. I have to understand that I must destroy, completely repent, completely return, I mean, turn back from the way that I was thinking so that I can move forward. So this brings us to the six stages of conformity. Some of you have heard this, but when I heard the six stages of conformity, I said, this is the missing, one of the missing puzzles that I needed to hear because when we are dealing with the six stages of conformity, oftentimes when I skip down to number six, we want our lifestyle to change, but number one did not take place as in my precept, my original thought pattern has not changed. So in order for me to truly repent, the old way must be uprooted. So let's look at this. So the six stages of conformity, number one, I'm looking at number one, it says the precept, which is the original thought from the father. We have the word here to guide us. This word is here so that we can obey this word, so that we can conform our lives to this word, so that we can govern ourselves accordingly. The word of Elohim is the absolute truth. So when we come up with different topics or we deal with different things such as um, abortion, when we deal with things as in sin outside of being marriage, when we deal with homosexuality, the word has already said what is true. This is the initial precept from the father. And so if I'm doing anything apart from that, it's evil just as we said in Yermahu earlier. So 
Now, number one, the precept, the original thought. So we know that that is the word. Number two, the concept, the thought that is conceived that I'm impregnant with. So I take this precept and I receive it and deem it as being true. And then I am now pregnant with this concept. I'm pregnant with this precept of the word. So now it's a concept. I have conceived it just as a woman is, con she conceives and she is pregnant. So we are pregnant with truth. Listen to this. When you are pregnant with truth, you are going to give birth to fruit that is good. All right. So number three, convictions. What I believe to be true and what I live by. I'm convicted by what I have deemed and I'm pregnant with. I'm convicted by this thing. I'm holding fast to this thing. Just as a woman who is pregnant, she doesn't give birth right away. So this thing, I have, my mind is being renewed. I'm being transformed. And so I definitely know that this, what I believe is true. There's no debate about it. We don't have to vote about it. The king's word is law and it is true. He's not changing, changing his mind. It is forever settled in heaven and let it be settled here on earth. All right. And so number four is the belief systems, a set of convictions. And then number five, ideology, system of ideas that you accept as being true. So the word is true. I have a system way and ways of doing things. And guess what? I'm not trying to do it my way. I'm doing it the way that the father has already said. And because I understand that the precept is the original thought from the father, I govern myself accordingly. Therefore, it makes repentance much, much easier, right? Because I, his thoughts are my thoughts. And then number six, I will have evidential proof in my lifestyle because my lifestyle will have a corresponding action of what was already uh, birthed in me or what I have been impregnated with. And now I will give birth to everything that is good, everything that is pure, everything that is of a good report. Why? Because I am constantly renewing my mind thinking about the precepts of the father, all of this has to do with repentance. We've been, we've been trying to change on our own and wondering why we fall down and we get up. Oh my goodness, it's got to stop. We don't have to fall down and get up anymore. The word tells us that he is able to keep us from falling. He's able to keep us from stumbling and present us faultless until the day of Yeshua. I, I mean, it's right there in his word. So here is the opposite effect. And I want you to look at this because when we go apart or try to operate outside of the word of Elohim, let's just take the example of number one, if my precept was apart from the word of Elohim and I feel that sex is just created for pleasure, whether I'm single or married, and I can just do it whenever I want to do it because it's my body and I do what I want to do. Okay, so we hear things like that, uh, even concerning abortion. Well, it's my body, then I should do what I want to do. Well, the last time I checked, the baby that's on the inside of you, it wasn't your body. And then secondly, when you said, and I'm talking about believers now, if you're not a believer, then I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about those who are blood washed. So. If you are a believer, now you said that your, your life was not your own and that you belong to the father. So since it's not your life that we're talking about, I mean, your life don't belong to you, then we have to do what his word says. But let's just look at it when we do what we want to do. So here's the example, precept. And I'm still talking about repentance because we have a sex dilemma that is totally out of control, not just sex. I mean, the word tells us that without a vision, without vision, people 
run around, they cast off, they run like it's wild. Vision what? Vision of a father. That's a whole nother teaching. But let's just stick with what we were talking about. We're talking about repentance. But here, the precept, sex is created. If this is your belief system, sex is created for pleasure, whether single or married, watch this, the concept. I agree with this thought. So anything goes. Johnny can call you at 2 a.m. He can just call you at 1 a.m. He can just stop by whenever he wants to. He or she, it doesn't matter. We're dealing in this age here where some people are saying, you know what? Um, you don't have to be a, monogam a monogamous relationship. Why not uh, have three wives? And better yet, don't even get married. Why, why even do that? There are so many things that are part from the word, word of Elohim. And this is why the world is full of chaos. It's full of sex. It's full of pornography. But when you have decided, decided to truly repent, watch this, that changes. It changes. Why? Because you go back to the original intent of the word. Number three, convictions, because I believe this, my guards are down. The enemy has a legal right to come in. Why? Because we have opened those doors. And then number four, belief system, because I believe this, I'm either going to have sex with a person that I'm not married to. I'm going to shack. I'm going to be in relationship with the same sex, have an abortion. The list goes on. I must change. I must change. I'm only talking to the blood bought, washed believers. I must change in order for me to get something different. I have to think something differently. All right. Number five, ideology. Since I think this is true, I continue in this as if nothing is wrong. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take it further. Not only do I feel as though nothing is wrong? I even support those who's doing wrong. And I'm telling them, oh yeah, that, that Bible stuff, that's, that's a fairy tale. If that's you and you say that you are a believer, then check it again. Some of us who are talking like this or not, I can't say us, I'm not talking like this. Some people who are talking like this, they have not even given their lives to the father, and they're not even saved. So this is what really helped me. I heard the Holy Spirit say, stop expecting people who aren't even saved to govern themselves accordingly. Stop expecting number six, that's in blue. Stop expecting their lifestyle to line up with the word when they don't even have my precepts. I'm not even dealing with them. I said, okay, thank you. All right, number six, philosophy. As a result, I may enjoy the temporary pleasures of illicit sex, but guess what? If I'm a believer, my testimony is weakened and I don't stand upright before the father. And I also approve what other people are doing just like this because I'm not going to, I'm not going to be the one to judge. Come on out of here. You listen, if you have conquered that area as kingdom ambassadors, we are to judge. There is a righteous judgment. We're still talking about repentance because we have to repent from holding on to things that we need to get rid of. Unless the entire house is burned down, there is no true repentance. This is why it's so easy for people to go back to what they were doing. Go to the altar. Pastor, I want you to pray with me concerning this, this, and this, because I'm really struggling. Did you burn the house down once you made that confession? Did you put the word of Elohim on the inside of your belief system so that you can fortify that area so that when the enemy comes back and see that that, oh man, that area not fortified. Let me check that. Let me, let me just poke her right there. Let me just 
put this bait in front of her right there or him right here and just see how he or she responds. Listen, when I burn that house down, there's nothing for me to go back to. There's nothing in me to cause that enemy to say, oh, wait a minute. Okay, man. Okay, I just went back to that same area to test her and she's stronger. Man, I see the word here. See, that's why the word says that submit to Elohim, resist the devil, and then he'll flee. Many times we just say, yeah, resist the devil, child, and he'll flee. Did you submit to Elohim first? All right, so let's look at this. Let's go a little further. So turning back is not an option when there is nothing worth turning back to. I don't have nothing to turn back to. What, what ashes? The house is burned down. The house is burned down. Sin don't live there anymore. All right. So the question that I have to ask myself, who do I love more? If I love the father more, then I'll go with him. But if I love what's temporary more, that's what I'm going to go with. And that's what I'm going to continually be entangled with. All right. So in Galatians 5 and 1, it says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which the Messiah has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Whatever I don't master, it's mastering me. Whatever I decide that I'm going to hold on to and be in covenant with, see, I can either be in covenant with the father or I can be in allegiance with the enemy in everything that's demonic. If I'm not in covenant with the father, then I'm in covenant with the enemy. I can't, I can't halt between two opinions. I can't be one way one day and then another way another day. True, true repentance did not take place. Now let's look at Romeo 5 and 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have shalom with Elohim through our Yahweh, Yeshua, the Messiah, through whom we also have access by faith into this favor in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of Elohim. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. So you mean to tell me once I give my life to Yeshua that I'm going to have tribulations? Absolutely you will, but keep going. Knowing that the tribulation produces perseverance. You have need, I have need to persevere. Why? Because watch this and perseverance character. We have been so blessed to hear Dr. Larry talk about the character test. You know, the character, the part of you that no one sees when, when nobody's looking, you know, that part, the part that we don't want to show anybody, that part, that character. Will you continue to stand after you have done all to stand and keep standing? Will you continue to stand when you know, everybody else is gone and that temptation come because there's one thing about the enemy. He's going to do his job. He will always tempt you with the things that you like. That It's not a temptation if it's nothing. I mean, if it's something that I don't like, that's not a temptation, but it's something that I like, then I have to make sure that I change my mindset because I cannot love the bait that's sending me to hell. Now let's go back to this and perseverance, character, and then character, hope. I heard something about hope, how we are helping other people excel. We are helping other people just push out and do the things that they need to do in the, the nation of the kingdom. So the kingdom government, so as we do this, we have to have that mindset and knowing that the same father that saved us, 
is the same one that's going to keep us. I'm not responsible for making sure that I never fail. Now that's that's kind of like a curveball, right? Why? Because I'm putting my hope in him. I don't put any confidence in this flesh. I'm putting my hope and trust in him. Surely if he made me, he's able to keep me. Okay, so in verse five, it says, now hope does not disappoint. Hope does not disappoint because the love of Elohim has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. I love this. There's no reason why I should be disappointed because I have hope. The love of Elohim, his revealed truth, what's it revealed through him is on the inside of me, right? Instead of me being in covenant with other things, I'm in covenant with his will. All right. And then it says, it's been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Be encouraged. Because we've been hearing things like, oh, we fall down, we get up. Stop. That Turn that song off. I can't, you know, I, I re there are some things I'm just like, you know, just stop. It's a, we have heard enough excuses and the enemy is real smart. He'll put a beat to it, make it, make it sound like it's so lovely. No, no, I never liked that song from the very beginning. No, no more. We are all sinners saved by grace. No, either you're a sinner or you're a saint. Come on, true repentance. No more God understands. You know, when people say, God understands. I say, yes, Elohim, he does understand. That's why there's a heaven and a hell. We, we just need to make a decision. Whose side are we on? If we're on his side, then we'll go with him. But if we're on the devil's side, then let's just do whatever you are big and bad enough to do and do it to the fullest. Whatever you want to do, just be totally sold out to it. But the prayer is that the Father will continually deal with your heart so that you can make a decision to follow him wholly. And then no more, only God can judge me. See, those are religious spirits who truly don't want to repent. If you have said these things, then maybe you said it out of ignorance, but guess what? No more, only God can judge me. Only God can judge you. For real? Oh, okay. I guess you didn't know that eventually we're going to judge angels. I, I guess you didn't know that. So surely we can discern or judge these matters that we have here, right? No more holding on to what we know is wrong. When we have truly repented, when we have truly um, decided to follow Elohim, we know that only those who do the will of him are the ones who are truly his. Now watch this. It says in Matthew 7 and 21, it says, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, or Yahweh, Yahweh, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that do, the person that does the will of the father who is in heaven, so it's not just about what I am saying. It's about what I am doing. So that's what true repentance is. Changing the way that we think. And here it is. So the word of Elohim says, and this is what Yeshua said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, change the way that I think. I must change the way that I am thinking so that I can produce another way of being. Okay, look at this note. Repentance is an inward work that will produce evidential proof as a result. It's time out just believing what people are saying. I'm like, no, I'm checking that tree. <laughs> if ain't no fruit on it, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm awake. Because eventually time will tell all. All right, so now here are some things that we can repent from. Rejecting knowledge. Repent from 
procrastinating. Repent from willful disobedience. Repent from prioritizing my vision over Elohim's vision. In all of these, it can we can take some time in each one of these, but I will not today. But see, when I truly repent, I want to be pleasing to the Father in every aspect of my life. So it's not that I'm, you know, I'm good over here, but no, I'm still not going to do that. No, hold up. Not my will, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Okay, so we said this earlier, we cannot love the very bait that's sending us to hell and repent from it too. No, it's either one or the other. In Corinthians all of 10 and 13, the word of Elohim reads, no trial has overtaken you except what is common to man. And Elohim is trustworthy. We were just talking about having our confidence in him who shall not allow you to be tried beyond what you are able. But with the trial shall also make the way of escape in enabling you to bear it. This is very important. Verse 14, therefore, my beloved ones, flee from idolatry. This is important because idolatry, there are so many things that uh, people have idols with not just um, not just a statue. We're not talking about that. We're talking about idol worship as in music. We're talking about idolizing sex over the word. We're talking about idolizing fraternities and sororities. Some people actually think that they could actually be in covenant with a, another thing, another covenant and being covenant with the father. No, there's only one covenant. He's a jealous Elohim. He his he said his name, his authority, his character, all that he is, he's jealous. He's either number one or nothing. He's not going to share his glory with anyone. Look at verse 14. Therefore, my beloved ones, flee from idolatry. Flee, flee. So when we flee from it, remember, we submit to the word first, right? And then we are able to resist the devil, and then we will be able to flee. All right. And then the last scripture that I want to give you is in Jude 1 and 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. This is amazing. Praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of Elohim, looking for the mercy of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, unto eternal life. See, I have to build myself up. How am I going to build myself up? How do I make that exchange? Because after I repent, then I must continually build myself up, be filled with the Holy Spirit build myself up, continually renew my mind with his word so that I can fortify those areas so that when the enemy does come back, because he will, that I will pass that test. I'll pass the character test. I'll pass the patience test. I'll pass every test that I need to pass so that I can be um, just in the right posture before Elohim. Okay, and then verse 22. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now, in order for me to do number 22, verse 22, in order for me to do that, if I'm going to save others, First, I got to make sure that I have myself together. In order for me to help, I must have a then in my life. I must make sure that I'm being obedient and then go back and strengthen my brother. Okay, and then verse 24. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, to him who is able to keep you from being offended. Some people are offended at the word of Elohim because 
they can't see oh man I, it's just too hard i i just i just can't do it i you know this battle i'm battling within myself i'm i'm you know it sounds real good it sounds real good listen make a decision make a decision either i'm with him or i'm against him there's no vacillating now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, power, dominion, glory, and honor. Oh, I love that scripture. I thank you, Father, for your word, because you did not leave us as orphans, as if we, we don't have nowhere to go. We don't have any type of guidance. Every answer that we need is in the word of Elohim. So when I repent, I truly repent with the expectation of never going back and doing that same thing again. Let's look at this last scripture. This is in Yochanan 15. The word of Elohim says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word. We're talking about the people who have already repented. Those who have repented, yes. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. And watch this. Verse four says, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine Neither can you unless you abide in me. This is so important because after you are cleansed, there's a continual abiding in his word. There's a continual fellowship in his word. There's the continual being, oh, Father, I want to be pleasing in your sight today. I'm not concerned about what she's doing or what he's doing. I'm not concerned about what's going on on so, social media. I'm not concerned about this and that. And I'm not even concerned about the election. I'm not concerned about any of that. Lord, I just want to be pleased by doing your word. My goodness today. Thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. And so in verse four, it says, abide in me and I in you. And as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, if I'm not bearing fruit, I could not be abiding. The beauty of the fruit, my goodness today, the beauty of the fruit is this. It has seed on the inside so that it can continue to produce. So I have to have evidential proof in my life. So it, it's no we fall down and we get up. It's no he's still working on me. No, I have decided to follow him wholly. I have decided to burn that other thing down and go with him fully. See, when we make a decision, no hell can stop you. No devil can outdo you or no devil can put you to the test and you not pass that test. Why? Because the greater one is on the inside of you. We must have evidential proof. Here it is. Repentance is the evidential proof of an inward change. Fruit must eventually come forth. My goodness. Thank you, Father, for your word today. And for those who are watching, I want to say thank you for joining us once again. And at the sound of my voice, if you haven't truly repented, look in the word of Elohim, though it's clear of what is required. It's clear. It says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, right? And so as, as we continually confess, watch this, there's a corresponding action. It's not just lip action. <laughs> it's not just lip action. There's a corresponding action to that. And I continually abide in his word. So if you were blessed by this word today, we just want you to just continually pray for us. We are thanking the father that it's on. Everything is on. Everything is moving. Some people say it's popping. It's cracking. However you want to say it. Look, 
We are about the father's business. Turning back is not an option. Turning to him is the way to go. Shalom to everyone. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. Be blessed.